bring us to where we are now, to where we are asking for somebody to come in and save us. And they're already here. And if we ask because of our free will, will you please save us, well then we've asked for it. And we've gotten exactly what it is that we deserved, because we didn't take responsibility as a race to fix our own problems and to deal with our own problems. We kept looking outside of ourselves. And, you know, this is why the Andromedans are so strong about us growing up and really taking responsibility for it. Now, how many human beings are, is the Andromeda Council in contact with on Earth? I, I remember you saying at one time four. To my knowledge, they're in contact with four. Um, beyond that, I don't know. I don't know if there are more, if there are going to be more. I know there's one in the United States, there's one in South America, one in Asia, one in Europe. Um, but there are other groups that are here you know, over 170, who may also on some level be talking to people and communicating, whether it's physical or, or um, telepathic or um, uh, through mediumship, you know, dealing with the different spiritual levels. Um, there's a lot of information that's being sent down here. Are they finding it's, it's effective? Is it working? To a degree, it's not working as quickly as they want, simply because most people are incredibly apathetic. Right. Uh, they're, they're stuck in their 9 to 5, I have to make my mortgage payment, my kids got to get to school in the morning, and I don't give a damn about anything else. And unfortunately, that isn't going to work. It isn't going to save you. It isn't going to protect you. There's so much more going on here. You know, and we are just one small part of this whole picture that's going on. And we have to wake up. Period. Now, one of your contacts is a 4 foot old eleven inch light blue skin being called Phaseus. That's correct. Please describe his or her personality in detail. Phaseus, well, he's very serious. He's very benevolent. He's he's considered a sage in, in his world. Um, he's an incredible healer. He has perspectives on things that are just far beyond any anything anyone that I know. Um, He's very direct, he's very humble, he's very soft, um, uh, he's, he's uh, very direct, um, and, and when he moves into a room, like we've, when I've walked with him or walked with the others, when we walk into rooms or different areas of motherships and, and, and the ships, energy changes. People, of course, they're very in touch with energy themselves. They instantly turn and they acknowledge him and they bow. Um, I guess he would be considered a, a Nishwish or a Yahweh. A, 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 a an Abril or, or, a, or I don't want to use the word God. An elder. An elder, you know, of tremendous of wisdom and insight. And um, they take very seriously what is going on here. And the manipulations, the things that the Greys, the Orions, and the Reptilians are doing here. Um, uh, they're appalled with what's going on here. Um, the other one is Morane. Well, let me, Morane. let me get to Morane in a second here. Uh, you mentioned directness twice. Uh, with that in mind, what was the most memorable interaction you have shared with Phaseus? They're all memorable. But I guess the single most, in, well, there's been two. One that just occurred. Um, but the, prior to that, the single most important one was I had just had a contact and uh, we had spent about an hour or so together and I was very depressed, very sad. And as I'm, I'm, I'm leaving the ship, I was crying and I turned around and, and I looked at him. And he looked at me and he smiled and his words were, the love that you withhold is the pain that you carry. That's been the most memorable one, only because... Of, of what that particular statement entails. Um, when we leave our physical form and, you know, what many of the uh, Catholicisms teach, you know, you're judged by God. It just simply isn't true. We judge ourselves. And, I, and what I read in that statement is that when we cross over, we look at the places in our life where we withheld love, that we maybe didn't give enough. And um, we judge ourselves on that. So uh, that's, that's been the most profound one for me. 
and Mornay. He's a seven and a half or eight foot snow white skin hairless being. Uh -huh. also, uh, he, he's light blue as well. Oh, light blue. Oh, I'm sorry. He's light blue. Uh, can you describe his or her? Oh, he. Can you describe his personality then in detail? He's serious, but he also has a really good sense of humor. Um, uh, he can snap me out of out of my depressions uh, very quickly, and he has just a different perspective on uh, uh, of looking at things. Um, he he also um, tends to be. Um, uh, part of their uh, their exploratory team, in other words, you know, when there are times when they need to defend themselves or they're confronted with something, he takes on a military type of role. Um, he's he's very very fatherly, <clears throat> big brother, big brother. Um, he's also one that you know he will he shows more emotion. He'll give you a hug or put his arm around you, um, and uh, uh, he just he's just really really wonderful in that sense. He's he's more he's more human in that sense. He's not as as sterile sometimes as Viseus uh, would would appear to be. It's not that they're not loving, but you know sometimes uh, Morinet is a lot more animated. You know, and and I can I can um, uh, uh, relate relate more to him, and I think he can relate more to the emotions that we experience here, the the tremendous. Uh, uh, extremes that we experience. I think he's a little bit more in touch with that, you know, than maybe, maybe sometimes Viseus appears to be. Now let me ask you, uh, <clears throat> what was the most memorable experience you've had with Mornay? I can't talk about that. <laughs> I won't talk about that. Okay. Um, now, please describe where and when you were born and your youth. That's not something I want to talk about either. Okay. In detail... Because it's not about me, it's about the information. Okay, that's fine. In detail, please describe your first contact at eight years of age in 1964. I didn't really know anything about it. Um, uh, I just knew that I supposedly had fallen asleep, and when I woke up it was evening. Everybody had been looking for me, and I wasn't where I was. Um, you know, and when I took him back to show him where the imprint was, uh, uh, we were playing hide and go seek, and, and uh, this was in the peninsula of Michigan, near Woodstock, Michigan. And the people had been looking for me, and I wasn't there, and I got a spanking, you know, because I wasn't where I was supposed to be, and I'd been missing for hours. Um, you know, and uh, I, I didn't really know what had occurred until the second contact, which was at age 14 where I was told what had happened, that they had given me a physical, um, they had given me a suggestion to forget because of my uh, family members just simply wouldn't understand. And they were right. They were what, very right about why that. Was the, uh, why was the physical necessary? Well, they do that all the time. They do that to, all, um, to everybody to, to make sure that you're physically fit because they genuinely care about your physical health. And if there are problems, they want to make us aware of it and, and maybe offer a suggestion, you know, like maybe you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. Um, some people are even experiencing healings. And it's, it's just a genuine caring for, um, of acknowledging who you are, not only on a physical level, but on a spiritual level. Now at age 14, what was the nature of that contact? I was taken out of bed, um, and I woke up and I was uh, on a table in a room, and this was my first introduction to Faseas and Morinay at least conscious introduction. And they were looking down, and I did, on a soul level, experience a recognition. There was no fear whatsoever. Um, and we talked, and they showed me some things about my physical self. Um, they, they also uh, uh, gave me a ball, which recorded um, my entire energy field, who I was, who I've been in past lives. And as it was recording this, you know, I could see all these different images of who I'd been going across the screen. And they, they saved this, and um, this was put into the computer so that they would contact me and could contact me no matter where they were at any particular time that they need to. Um, I was asked if I wanted to help them. I agreed to do this, um, although at the time I didn't know exactly what it would entail. I had uh, at any time the choice to say no more, uh, but it's been an incredible experience for me.
Yeah, Alex, um, you, uh, I presume then, uh, if you had soul recognition of them, that you had had previous incarnations with them. 